the Arsenal Invincibles team of the year 2003 and 2004 is one of the greatest ever in the history of the Premier League because of what they achieved. And I'm in studio right now with one of the greatest players of that time, Loren Etamimea from Cameroon, who played for Arsenal between 2000 and 2007. He's in the country for a coaching clinic organized by a betting firm, Sport Pesa. Loren, um, what have you been doing since retiring from football? Yeah, what I've been doing since I've been retired is um, taking care about my own issues. And then uh, I did some punditry between in England and Spain. And also, I'm a study uh, at the university uh, business administration. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, you are very resourceful when it comes to understanding the game of football, mm -hmm. of course, having played for a very long period of time. And uh, one of the reasons you are in the country mm -hmm. is to conduct a coaching clinic. First of all, mm -hmm. uh, what was your understanding or what was your assessment of the levels of coaching of football in Kenya? Yeah, the level, uh, I mean, this initiative with the sport press and Arsenal, I think, is, uh, it's been so, so great, you know, to encourage youngsters, to encourage coaches yes. uh, to be able to, to be on the top level, you know, because as you know, in Europe and Spain and in England, the level is very high. And I, I think uh, what, what I've seen so far, so far has been, you know, it's been great because also what I would like to detach as well is uh, I saw a woman uh, having that diploma, uh, which is telling you how far we have been progressing in this concept. And, and I think uh, um, Kenya in, uh, in the perspective of uh, coaching, um, having coaches has been going uh, up, up, up every year and then, you know, it, it's, uh, it's been fantastic so far. The game is uh, changing quite a lot and, uh, you know, we are embracing a lot of technology and new uh -huh. ideas in sport yeah. and specifically in football. And uh, on his 20th um, anniversary, as Arsenal coach Arsene Wenger did say mm -hmm. that, you know, there will come a time when computers will have to pick, you know, your first 11 for you instead <laughs> and uh, not the usual coaches and, you know, trusting your eye. Yeah. If you look at Kenya, what is the disconnect, what is the gap between the levels in Europe in terms of coaching and what we have in the country, according to what you said? Yeah, uh, first of all, we have to say, we, we have to look within Africa, yes. because uh, I've been uh, doing, uh, traveling in the other side of Africa, Cameroon, Nigeria, Senegal, yes. and Mali. They're a little bit up ahead of this side of the country, because as well, I've been also an ambassador uh, for us and I'm traveling to Uganda and Rwanda. And this is my first time in Kenya, so you have to compare, first of all, that is, uh, in that side, there is one step ahead of uh, this side of Africa, and then Kenya is doing well. I mean, there is an initiative I saw yesterday with the president of the FA, mm -hmm. is looking for 2022 mm -hmm. to make it there. So this is the way to do things, that we know where we are, where we want to go. So um, uh, Kenya wants to be there in 2022, mm -hmm. and the best thing to do is start from now, and making... Uh, uh, learning from uh, uh, coaches from Europe and then uh, hopefully there will be more coaches and there will be more players from this side of, uh, of, uh, of Africa. Okay. What do we need to do then as coaches to improve our technical skills? I think it's, it's uh, uh, initially a few factors. It's not just one factor. I mean uh, uh, the FA, the involvement of the authorities, yes. uh, uh, the facilities, um, and uh, bring it all those factors together will make everything to improve. I mean, I think uh, the, the good thing is to, to start and have an idea and then have a target. And uh, the target is there and let's do going step by step. Africa is one of the continents with uh, the richest uh, talent base when it comes yeah. to football. Yeah. And we've seen a lot of players, you know, uh, applying their trade in yeah, Europe, definitely. especially from West Africa. Yeah. But lately we are seeing a lot from the eastern side of the continent. <laughs> we have Victor Wanyama there, proud of yeah, him. Yeah. We also have um, Liverpool Ridi, whose father yeah, is Kenyan, yeah. but of course, yeah, Liverpool, uh, yeah. international in place for Liverpool. A lot of them across Sweden um, mm. and, and Belgium as well. Mm -hmm. What is your assessment of talent within Kenya and within East Africa? The raw talent. Yeah, uh, as as you mentioned, uh, um, uh, Origi and um, and Wanyama. They have been following Wanyama. have been in Celtic and then after Tottenham, uh, passing from uh, um, Southampton. I think uh, you know um, slowly the um, this part and Kenya they they're going there. We have to consider that Kenya always been a country worldwide of those athletes and uh, marathonians. So you know. To, to go to that level in football, you have to go slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, suddenly, 
there is a few of them there, and then uh, as more the, the the improvement is there and the initiative and the and the idea is there, we'll see more and more uh, talented players from Kenya progressing in, in going to the Premier League or the Spanish League or some other contributions. What then is, is, good. A, is a problem? Why don't we have a lot more African players play, playing their trading in the biggest leagues in the world? Yeah, because they, 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 it's on the base. I mean, uh, if you, we all have to work, uh, kind of have to work from the base. And then uh, if you, there is an example of uh, 2,000 people going to athletes, mm -hmm. we have to go that level as well, uh, make it from uh, another 2,000 uh, um, from the base trying to be a footballer. Mm -hmm. So this is the only way to, to progress and, and to get to that level. On the side of coaching, uh, not many, um, again, um, black coaches uh -huh. are there in the European leagues. Most yeah. uh, black players, you know, end their careers and it's just that. <laughs> uh, they don't progress as much into the coaching yeah. aspect of the game. Why, why so? Well, uh, um, what I would say concerning myself, uh, you have to have some kind of... Um, um, that within yourself, I mean, uh, if you really wants to be a coach or not, there is not many really. Mm -hmm. And then I think uh, um, it's something that like it goes slow uh, and uh, it will be a time that um, uh, when we see a, a black person and a black coach winning something or, yes. or, or being in a big club, mm -hmm. the other, it will encourage other ones to say, look, uh, this guy, he made it, I can do it as well. So that's the first step, to see how one black person uh, coaching a big club and then it will be example for the rest do you think having accessed the coaching pool and a bit of talent do you think kenya can make it to the 2022 world cup yeah i mean the, the intention is there yes. they are working on that on that way which is good nothing is guaranteed in life but the the, the good thing is that uh, uh, they've got the willing to be there, which is great, and hopefully they will make it. All right. Let's talk about your Arsenal career then. And uh, between 2000 and 2007, 241 appearances for uh -huh. Arsenal and uh, quite some goals there. How goals. was it yeah. doing for Arsenal? Yeah, it's been, you know, taking a synopsis of uh, my time on, 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 on Arsenal, you know, it's been, it's been great, it's been fantastic. I mean, because, you know, it's not easy to be in a top team and play regularly mm -hmm. uh, without uh, having any injury, without, you know, another, uh, different distractions. And, uh, you know, I feel proud. And, uh, you know, I'm, I've been uh, fortunate to be as well in managing such a great coach as Arsene Wenger. One of the things you must surely be proud of most is the Invincibles mm -hmm. year of 2003, 2004, winning the league unbeaten. How did it feel to be part of that team? Yeah, I feel, uh, you know, very proud, uh, you know. I play the likes with together with Thierry, uh, Dennis, Pires. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> if I have to bowl again, I would like to repeat one again, again, and again. I mean, but how difficult is, is is it to achieve that kind of feat? It's in very. The Premier League? It's not easy. It's not easy. I tell you. You know, we see that we made it, mm -hmm. but we, there was many, many games that we were down, mm -hmm. we were losing, and then. We had the strength, the mental strength to bounce back mm -hmm. and win those games. So that show you the the spirit of that squad. Apart from the quality, it was commitment, the spirit. We were fighting for each other. I mean, that made us um, be the 49 and beaten. There's always that one player who stands out in a team of that kind. Who do you pick away from yourself <laughs> <laughs> in that team as the most standout player? On? Obviously, the most uh, is Thierry Henry. I mean, uh, what, what he did is uh, unbelievable because we, we see so many players that they've got the talent, they've got everything, but mentally they are not uh, focused to be the best every single day. Mm -hmm. And you know, and Thierry has that. He wanted to be the best player ever for us in a, every single day of his life. So mm -hmm. that's made it the, the top scorer for a club that more than 100 year history, which is amazing. During that period of time, the rivalry between Arsenal and Manchester United mm -hmm. was legendary, so to speak. And uh, <laughs> feisty matches you're always fighting. And there's one specific picture where yeah. you, you held one by the neck. <laughs> what, how, take us through those kinds, those matches against Manchester United. Yeah, it's, yeah, 
it's, there were two teams that we were fighting to win yes. things. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we were the, that generation, we were the best. So we played many games. So that one, it was the consequence of many challenges between, between each other. Mm -hmm. So on, on that stage, you know, uh, there is some point that you cannot control yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, it was, it missed the penalty, yes. the emotion was flying around. So mm -hmm. everybody, you know, was over there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but you know, if, we, if I have to defend my teammates, mm -hmm. I will always do it. You'll always do it. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you had to, you know, uh, stand out with regard to that in very many occasions. You had several um, injury stints within mm -hmm. your Arsenal days, and um, one of the things that you are meant to, you know, instill into the new coaches that we have right now is the issue of sports medicine. Yeah, definitely. Between that time and this day, what are the advancements that have been made in this field, and how can Kenyan coaches then adopt that kind of? I think the key, po the key point, one of the key points is the prevention. Okay. I mean, uh, the prevention is crucial because if you prevent. You analyze each person, uh, muscular, and you analyze everything. You take care about each player. Yes. You can make a program that uh, to prevent injury during the year. I mean, uh, and also the pre-season. While you're doing the pre-season, it will uh, stand for you for the whole year, okay. especially when you play 60 games mm -hmm. a year international. So I think in nowadays, uh, there is more, um, the teams, they need the income so they have to travel around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if you make a two session training a day, mm -hmm. you don't rest. You, after training, you go to the interview, you do the sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Your body cannot recover as you stay 10 days in one place, just training and uh, in the morning and the evening. So that's why we see the majority of the teams that they've got a lot of injuries. It's one of the issues, not only that, but of course it's a, uh, one of the issues that they have to look at it, I'm combining with the prevention. Okay. Last season in the Premier League, we did see one of the things that you rarely see in sport in the world of football. Leicester City uh, from fighting relegation all the mm. way to winning the Premier League. Yeah. Does it signal some sort of a paradigm shift in the Premier League right now? Yeah, it's, an, it's, it's awesome. Man. What, what they did was, you know, uh, uh, brilliant. And, uh, you know, um, now, the, you know, now they've got the, the, that pressure that they know that yes. we, uh, the people they're gonna attack him they're, uh, they're gonna attack them because they were the best mm -hmm. so now they drop down they go to the real level okay. but what they did was amazing. amazing yeah your Cameroon career Sydney 2000 you win an Olympic medal mm -hmm. and then uh, after that Cameroon is not okay up until what is it um, some yeah, 2002 sorry. Yes. 2002 yes the golden generation just went in Cameroon mm -hmm. these days is no longer yeah that yeah. That it's, that yeah it's uh, past. it's a country that uh, uh, any tournament you must win yes. and uh, since our time we uh, Cameroon didn't find the generation that to, to continue on that level mm -hmm. but I, I, I've been watching now that is some just coming out they uh, uh, play for Liverpool they play for in Germany mm -hmm. some in Spain like coming is still there mm -hmm. I mean uh, I think uh, this this um, in this wo uh, African Cup the, they will be able to, to improve what we did in the past. In the past. So going forward, um, your football, post-football career now, mm -hmm. what will you be doing in the future now that you have had a taste of what coaching <laughs> looks like? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking more in, um, in, in within football, but some other, other directions. Okay. Uh, uh, hopefully, I've been uh, in uh, doing some, some search, some negotiation, and, and I hope uh, in the next month, everything come to the right way. Mm -hmm. If not, I will uh, obviously will, I will consider it, I will start to consider the yep. coaching. We'll see. Finally, uh, the Sport Pesa Coaching Clinic, one of the initiatives that this specific betting company and of course the Football Kenya Federation is doing to try lift the levels of the game mm -hmm. in the country. How can we tap into the resources of the developed world in terms of uh, sports and in terms of football? into our own system and try to develop from that. How important are things like the sport pesa coaching clinic it's very to the development of our football? It's very important. I mean, the, what they do is pe uh, sport pesa together with Arsenal, you know, uh, you know, is to spread and to encourage that the, the kids that they don't have the, the opportunity to to be in a, in a proper condition to, to get the, the knowledge, you know. With, with these initiatives, you know, 
we boost the youngsters to, to have the, 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 the arsenal way, the way. Mainly, I, I would say in the tactical point of view, I see some great players the other day, and then we have to improve that tactical issue. And this initiative will, uh, as they, the kids they take the younger year, is better. The better will be for them to, to achieve the goal, to be in the best. So thank you so much for speaking to You're us. You're welcome. Arsenal okay. legend Loren Tami Mayer speaking about the Sportless Coaching Clinic is here in the country to oversee and of course he's Arsenal.